Last week, Governor Jesse Ventura came to visit me in Austin, Texas. He's working on the second season of his hit television show, Conspiracy Theory for True TV. Uh, but that's all coming up in the fall. While we were driving around, we had time to discuss some of the things that are on the governor's mind, like naked body scanners in the airports and Homeland Security turning into the American Gestapo. He also told me about some of the behind the scenes stuff uh, that he witnessed in his career in Hollywood with films like The Running Man and Predator. This is some pretty interesting stuff. So here's part of my discussion with Jesse Ventura as we were driving around Austin, Texas. Okay, uh, no, just some of the stuff we've been doing uh, interesting wise is that I told you about what happened at the Kennedy Flame, didn't I? Yes, on the radio, but talk about it yeah. now on video. Well, what happened was we, we tried to go through proper channels and more has evolved from it since then. We tried to go through proper channels and say, look, we want to film at the eternal flame of John Kennedy. And we were first told, well, there can't be any dialogue. We said, that's fine. We don't, we don't need any dialogue. I'll just be solemnly standing there, hands folded, looking at the flame and in my thoughts. And uh, they then came back officially and denied us. And they actually even said on the paper, because I, I went to my congresswoman, Michelle Bachman, because I was outraged over this. I said, how can they tell me I can't? You know, we just wanted to let them know, yes, we're going to do it. We ended up doing it. And in fact, it was typical government. The top wasn't communicating with the bottom because when we came there, all the guards moved everybody out of the way so we could get the shot. You know, they cleared everyone out because we said it'll only take five minutes. And so they, they worked great for us when we got there. But the upper echelon, the guy actually said, it's because we don't like the content of your TV show. And I have it on paper and a letter to Michelle, but that's what they told the Congresswoman. So now the Army is deciding who can, can film at national parks according to what they agree with. Uh, yeah. In essence, yes. They, well, did, they did not like the content of my show, therefore they denied me a Navy veteran, a mayor and a governor from being photographed in front of John Kennedy's eternal flame. Now, they also lied to the Congresswoman about this. They said that it had to be cleared through the Kennedy family, right? So we contacted the Kennedy family and the spokesman for the Kennedys came back and said, we don't know what they're talking about. They said, we have never had anything to do with Arlington Cemetery other than President Kennedy's buried there. But they said, we, do have, we have never had any jurisdiction. They, they said that falls under the Arlington Cemetery. So this guy blatantly lied to the con Congressman, woman Bachman, that it requires permission from the Kennedy family. And the Kennedy spokesman came back and said, we have nothing to do with that. We've never, ever granted permission. We don't have nothing to do with that. And if I remember correctly, Governor, uh, they also said we don't allow anybody to do you know, stand-up shots there, but then we went and looked it up. It, it, there's all sorts of TV and uh, the oh, film JFK was shot Kevin there. Kevin Costner stood there and did it. So they were lying through their teeth on multiple things just simply because, as the guy said, he personally and the Army doesn't like the content of my shows. And so, that was quoted. And, this, and I'm getting back to the Congresswoman because she writes in the bottom, I hope this answers the problem. Well, no, it doesn't. I want this guy fired. How can he bring his personal opinion into government policy? You know, that's ridiculous. So he sounds like a petty dictator with mission creep way outside his jurisdiction. Yes. And what right does he have, because he doesn't particularly agree with what my show covers, to deny me, you know, yet he'd approve someone else if he did agree with what they did? You know, that's not up to him, and it shouldn't be up to any government official. And the bottom line is, Alex, Arlington Cemetery is paid for by my tax dollars, and I'm a taxpayer. Well, they might just privatize it and give it to some foreign company. I that mean, could happen, too, but it hasn't been done yet. Well, the way they're doing it with water. Now, now, now Jesse, I know the show's coming out in the fall, and uh, you know, I've, I've been a consultant been privy to some of the behind the scenes. It, 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 it's looking like this season's going to be even more riveting and, 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 could be, and, and scary know, than the last uh, one. It but, could be. I mean, I mean, how much can you talk about the other harassment and surveillance? Well, other harassment has been we particularly wanted to go to an island to view it. And I won't say at this time what island or anything like that, but we hired a fishing boat and we got down there with our cameras and when he realized what we wanted to do, he wouldn't do it. And none of the other boats in the harbor would either. And the reason is 
is Homeland Security. Uh, Homeland Security now owns their licenses and livelihoods because anything on the borders falls under their jurisdiction. So if they tick off Homeland Security, Homeland Security can then pull their licenses and they can't earn a living. And so we finally did get a boat to come over from a different harbor. And it's kind of a funny tale because when he pulled up, I knew we had the right man. You know how I knew it, Alex? How? He was flying the skull and crossbones <laughs> from his mast. And I turned to the crew and I said, we got the right guy now. I said, anybody that flies the skull and crossbones from the mast, you know, and all he cared about, he said, you're not going to ask me to do anything illegal, right? And I said, no, we're going to be in you know, international, national waters. We're not going But it's the a, intimidation and the how there's intimidation. now this total federalization of everything. Everything. Uh, we had talked about the... I'm viewing Homeland Security and what I'm seeing out of them. They're supposed to be there for our protection. I'm now referring to them as the Gestapo. They're the United States, or they could evolve into the United States Gestapo. I can see that on the horizon. About a year ago, I asked you about the naked body scanners in the airport, and you said you hadn't encountered them yet. Now you have. Yeah, in Denver. Give us your, uh, what happens there? Well, they're just a big body scanner where they offer it to you much simpler than standing there with the guy with the wand. And you go inside this big, huge booth, and apparently they just take a picture of your whole body from 360 degrees because it encompasses you go inside the thing. And I now purposely don't go. I won't use them. I would rather be hand scanned and and of course when I go through an airport I'm pulled out every time because I've had uh, prosthesis surgery of the hip I have too much metal in my hip now and so I set the buzzers off no matter what airport I go to uh, so it's an every if I'm flying it's an everyday occurrence for me to be hand scanned you know with the with just the the, the wand and the, and the human but I refuse to go into one of those body scanners. Well, Governor, I want to tell you about something. It's, it's just come out in the last few weeks. In the last year and a half since they've had these scanners in, and now they're going into uh, hundreds and hundreds of airports, they had lied and said, we're not saving any of the images and we can't see your genitals. Now they admit they're saving all of the scans with your name, and they're going in federal and state courthouses, and they're scanning children, women, everybody, and saving it, and they got caught lying again. I mean, how many times does the government have to get caught lying? I mean, well, why the, well, the problem is, Alex, is even when they're caught lying, it's the government investigating the government. There's a, ma you know, we can agree to that. There's a major conflict of interest when the government investigates itself. You what? know, we need to have some lawmakers set up something, which is, few, you know, you, good luck on this. But we need some type of independent citizen organization to start, to when, when, when something the government does requires them to be investigated, why should they be investigating themselves? That would be like, Alex, if you and I were out in the regular world and you committed a crime and they arrested you, and you got to say, well, okay, I get to lead the investigation of me, though. You know, even though you've arrested me and you realized I've committed this crime, I will lead the investigation of myself. Well, that's like Al Capone being the judge at his own trial. Exactly. Good way to put it. Governor, speaking of uh, foxes guarding the hen house, what's your view on Wall Street uh, now being given immunity for all the things they've done in the Federal Reserve setting up this private board in Congress passes a law saying that they get even more power out of the crisis they created. Well, it kind of reminds me of when they gave immunity to Blackwater in Iraq. After they slaughtered a bunch of innocent citizens in a big street shootout, Bremer goes over there and signs a piece of paper that Blackwater is not accountable for anything they did here. So I guess you could view put Wall Street and Blackwater in the same sentence now. They're both receiving essentially the same benefits. Well, that's almost like diplomatic immunity with yeah. the United Nations where these guys, these UN diplomats get caught having sex slaves, raping people, yeah. killing people, shipping drugs in, in, in a diplomatic pouches. Well, it's, it's, it, 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 but yet we can learn from it because uh, I also read a great book on the, uh, the wit and wisdom of Keith Richards of the Rolling Stones. And you know what Keith did because, you know, Keith was always getting busted over in London, right, for everything he did. And Keith drives a big, huge Bentley. You know what he did, Alex? He took two foreign flags of the same country and stuck it on the front bumper, the front fenders of his Bentley. So whenever he'd drive around London, the cops would go, it's, 
diplomat car. Let him go. No, is that brilliant? No, no, that's a great point. But, but, but that, I mean, way, that way Keith could get away with anything he wanted to do, and no one would arrest him because they thought he was a diplomat. Weren't you a bodyguard for the Rolling Stones? Yeah, 80, 78 and 81. Yeah, well, I was a bodyguard for all the bands, not exclusively the Stones. I, I'd had some knee surgery, and a friend of mine said, do you want to be security for the rock and roll bands? He was part of the uh, uh, production company that brought them into the Twin Cities. And they said, we need bodyguards to protect the rockers when they come to town. So I not only did the Stones, I did Springsteen, Foreigner, Grateful Dead, uh, Marshall Tucker. Uh, I can't even remember all the, all the Bob Seger. I did, I did uh, during that period of time, I probably did every great rock group there was. And you got to see the show for free and you got even paid a couple of bucks. So it was a, it was a fun time. You can't beat that. On a lighter note, earlier I was talking about how much I like the movie Running Man and how your character is my favorite and I also love you in Predator and everybody else you know, thinks you're the best in Predator. But you told me about another ending uh, of that movie that the public isn't aware of. Well, they, they, no one's aware of it now because I'm sure it's been burnt, gone. And But they, they shot two endings to it. and they, uh, If you remember The Running Man, my character really got lost. Uh, my character was never resolved. After I killed Arnold on screen, that was all computer generated and was false, of course, because you know Ar Arnold, uh, you know, didn't die in the film naturally. Uh, my character was lost from that point, and they uh, they just left it that way, which which is kind of unfulfilling in a way. But they shot an ending where, uh, in the end, when Arnold sees uh, uh, who's the co-star, Maria Conchita Alonso. When they see each other and they walk forward to each other, they had a point where I would drop down from the ceiling and I've got Arnold dead in my sights. I can kill him deader than hell. And, and it looks like I'm going to, I squeeze the trigger, but two guards come in behind, I shoot them, and then the three of us walk out together. Captain Freedom ends up with Arnold because as you saw during the involvement of the film, I tend to decide I grew to more towards Arnold than the stalkers because of big, the big showdown I had with Killian when he tried to give me all these gimmicks and I said, this is a code of the gladiators. You know, this is bullshit. This is, we have a code. And man, I've been killing man, guys like this, this with my bare hands. Yeah, I don't need all this crap. Yeah, and through, and so. And he says, get out of here. We'll just use the computers. Yep, he said, get out of here. And so he, he, in essence, fired me. But at that point, my character, was lost. And we see that same theme when uh, the, the other big bodyguard, security guard, won't won't protect uh, Gillian when he says, aren't Gillian. you going to do something? And, and he said, I have to go score some steroids. Yeah. Yeah, this is Sven. Well, you know who Sven is, <coughs> don't you? Yeah, he's in the Conan movies. No, Sven was actually for many years Arnold's bodyguard. Oh, really? Yeah, so Arnold would always put him in the films. Sven, if you look at just about every Schwarzenegger film, you'll see Sven somewhere. His real name is Sven Ole Thorsen. Great nope. guy, you know, big, brutal power lifter from over in Denmark. And sure, but that was my point, is that he is one of the, uh, you know, Norse guy, uh, guys in uh, Conan the Barbarian. Oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, no, you will see, well, he's in Predator. Think about it, Alex, where did you see him in Predator? Where, I don't remember. He's in there. Sven is in Predator. What scene, like in the early part when they're at the base? Nope. He's one of the Russians at, at the thing we overrun. Arnold kills him, and he goes knock, knock, and opens up the door, and boom. And remember, Sven's in there with the papers, and he shoots him. Sven's also the guy that shoots the helo pilot in the head. Remember when we're back and we haven't hit him yet? Yeah. And you see him drag out the pilot, and boom, shoots him. That's Sven shooting him in the head. Hi, this is former Governor Jesse Ventura, and this is The Alex Jones Show. I recommend you all pay attention to Alex because Alex and I are teaming up again this fall for a second season of Conspiracy Theory where we will attempt to get to the bottom of these conspiracies. Until then, keep watching and listening to Alex.